Well, good evening, America, and welcome to It's Happening Out, the world's most popular live gay television talk show. It's 8 p.m. on Wednesday, December 9th, and you know what that means. It means it's happening out. I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson, so let's start by meeting tonight's host. This is going to be a lot of fun. First up, this is Chef Josie. She is a Bravo TV top chef and the master. <laughs> I love the master word. It's tingly. <laughs> the master right. of bubbles and pearls, the champagne and oil. Oyster Celebration Restaurant on famous Wilton Drive. Good evening, Josie. Hey, good evening, everyone. We're going to have some fun tonight, right? Absolutely. Okay, fun. good. I'm I've all been, about it's your It's my hair. birthday You're, week, okay? Yeah. So let's and do it. happy birthday. I feel like <laughs> it was Monday, wasn't it? Uh, whatever the day was. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. All right, next up is Faye. What? Uh, she's a radio host and has a popular YouTube channel here in South Florida and really all over America. Good evening, Faye. Hola, mi gente. ¿Cómo están? <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you say? I'll tell you later. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is Dale Stein. He's making his first appearance at It's Happening Out. He is a self-taught shutterbug who quickly established himself as one of the most sought-after photographers in Miami since moving here to Florida in 2001. His photographs and images have been featured in innumerable magazine covers, feature spreads, CD record covers, and websites. Internationally acclaimed DJs, producers, drag personas, as well as various politicos, business people, and entertainers are among his favorite clients. He is a North Carolinian native who moved to New York City after being accepted into the world-famous Juilliard School. Oh, oh we? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Where he received his master's degree in opera. Really? You sing yeah. opera like the Grand Old Opry? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and sure in addition to his photography work, Dale is currently the director of music ministry at Unity on the Bay. He's mm -hmm. also moderator, here's how I knew him, as one of the nation's most popular popular Facebook social groups, Miami Gay List. Good evening, Dale. Hello, hello, hello. I'm very happy to be here. And you're excited? Very excited to be part of this experience. Yes. With these we're, wonderful people. We're going to do a fun thing in Shag Mary Chop that's all about you. We have three <laughs> nudes of you, and we're going to pick which one we like oh, the whoops. best. And, oh. no, no, we're not doing that. All right. And next up is Rihanna Patron. She is the dancing diva of the Palm Beaches. And she was recently voted 2020's Best Drag Queen in Palm Beach County by the South Florida Gay News newspaper. She hosts Work It Wednesdays in, this is Wednesday, by the way, in Lake Worth. <laughs> uh, so you better drive fast when we're done. And, I'm going to be uh, flying out of here. <laughs> and exactly. And propaganda and a variety game show Sundays at Penny's at the Duke in Lantana. But you can see her twirling and flipping at many establishments throughout South Florida. And to me, the most interesting of all, she is a neighbor of Mar-a-Lago and now permanent <laughs> resident Donald Trump. And you get him back. So congratulations. Uh, well, Welcome, Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna. All right. Well, good evening, America. We are first and uh, we are the first and most popular live LGBTQ talk show in the world. There is so much to talk about next on It's Happening Out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. Well, you are watching a live and an unedited LGBTQ talk show, so anything can happen and you can see it because we don't stop, no matter how many mistakes Faye makes tonight. Quite a few. Uh, exactly. So anything can happen. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and click the bell for updates. If you're on Facebook, like and share 
uh, us uh, and start a watch party. It's super easy to do. Let's begin with a unique meme of the week. We have done this. You know, we're at about two and a half years of celebrating It's Happening Out on the Air, becoming the most popular gay live uh, talk show in the world. Uh, and we uh, want you to know our meme of the week. Can you show, or we ask the question, can you show pure joy, especially in pandemic and 2020? It's the holidays, so let's see if we can. It's called Woman Jingles All the Way. <laughs> I'll have what she's having. Watch this. So, and Dale uh, and Faye, I understand you're part of the music program at, uh, at Unity Dale. on the Bay. Yeah, yeah, Unity are. on the Bay. This is this is uh, one of the performances at uh, y'all's church. Right. No, <laughs> right. no, it's not. That kind of looks like Ruth, right? I knew that looked very familiar to me. I was like, I haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> I think if one of our choir members did that, uh, I think that I would know. totally be my mom. Would it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm thinking of, of someone in particular. Yeah. Like, look, at the, look at the people around him like, what is wrong with you, honey? You know what? I say this. I'm like, don't steal her joy. Let her be happy, you know? Whatever way she has to express herself, and more people would just live it out loud, you, you know? know? And as a director, I always say, give more, give more. Yeah. Give. Make me say, that's too much. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> bring it back. Well, bring it back. Scale back. Bring it back. Scale bring back. It back. Right. I, I'm exactly. not sure where the director is in this. <laughs> but yeah, where is <laughs> Probably director? laughing. Dale, how would you handle this? Well, I think I would delicately take her off the <laughs> I mean, talk about stealing focus. I'm yeah, that's <laughs> you see good. The, do you see the choir person next to her looking at her like, what? Yeah, on the her? woman on her left shoulder, as we see her to the right, she has scowled her like 10 times already. All right. Yeah. Well, that's our, our meme of the week. Uh, some <laughs> little holiday joy there. Uh, let's move into our drinking game. I always love to do this at the top of the show. <laughs> it's our yes. I know, exactly. It's, okay. And, and uh, uh, Rihanna, you're going to like this uh, game too, because I suspect uh, we are of the same mold in terms of drinking games. <laughs> um, this is our yes or no game called I'd Swallow That. We invite you at home to play along with us as I ask these hosts four questions. If they agree, they take the shot. I'm holding up one of the shots right here. Uh, some, uh, some vodka, I believe, tonight. If they disagree, well, it's going to be a long night for me, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so everybody ready? And Darren is uh, getting ready also in terms of one of our questions. Uh, then let's play I'd Swallow That. Question number one, I'd Swallow That. Trump has no chance with the Supreme Court. Biden will be sworn in on January 20th. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. That, ah, that water was that delicious. That was quick and unanimous. The Supreme <laughs> Court uh, considered the Pennsylvania case uh, and said in one sentence, no. <laughs> that was basically it. One sentence. Uh, most important, no dissent at all. Uh, y'all agreed with that, and you think it's over? Amazing. It's yeah. just over? What do y'all think? All done. Yeah, if they have to pull him by his toes, they're going to get him out of there January 20th. They are ready. Okay, if we have to pull him out of the White House, let's let it not be by the toes. Let's yeah, but the, 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 the real thing that is like a little bit dangerous right now is like the calls for GOPers who are willing to risk their lives for this sham of a re-election, you know, whatever the scam of the century as 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 uh donald trump will say and that's that's really what it is it's like we may not uh just be able to drag him from the white house we might have to drag every single supporter out of the way as well and let's be real a lot of his supporters are not playing with a full deck man so it's a scary times for the cheeto people well <laughs> you know and it, it, it's it's just really scary what it's unearthed in the country and to think that this is amongst us and it's been amongst us and now it's unleashed. So what are we going to do about that? So once he's even towed out, either by the toes or not, it's going to be interesting to see what we're going to be. You know, I, with. I have it's interesting you say that because I have felt guilty in the last month. I really have for for we we reported the first time we reported COVID-19 was on January 6, 2020. We've reported COVID-19 stories in every single Q News, Queer News Tonight show since January 20. 
And we gave him the benefit of the doubt. We kept pointing out what he was doing and what he was not doing, and it got worse and worse and worse. You remember the lines, it's a miracle, and, and all of the other bullshit that we heard out of his mouth over this year. But as anchor at Queer News Tonight, I, I wanted to give some respect to the office of uh, the President of the United States. In the last month, I've, I feel almost ashamed that I, am, I have growing not only animosity, but almost violent animosity toward what I have watched in, in our president and wanting to get rid of him, even moving to the point, which I'm shocked that I say this, hatred. I am beginning to hate the president of the United States, and I've never said that ever in my entire life. Hate, hate, hate. Hate. It actually scares me that children have to grow up with this right now. Yeah. Yeah. The kids are not, they don't, they don't even really understand what's going on by what, even what their parents see or what they see on television, but they actually have to grow up with this now. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you've seen it at, at rallies and such that some of the kids are with the parents and just acting with the same behavior that the mm -hmm. parents are, which is equally scary, if not scarier. I know. It, what is happening in America? What is happening? Let's, let's move on. I've had enough, uh, right up to here. Yeah, Trump. next shot. Come yeah, on. Next shot. <laughs> Question number two. I'd swallow that. Rudy Giuliani got COVID-19 this week. He got what he deserved. Oh, no. This is going to be a unanimous panel tonight. We're like the Supreme Court on Pennsylvania. Delicious. There's no dissent. <laughs> Look at what? him. Look at him. Come on, you know he oh. was reckless. You know he's been reckless. He has been at so many rallies and so many events without a mask on. I even saw a video the other day where he blew his nose, then oh. wiped his face with the uh. same handkerchief, then talked to the woman next to him and told her to take off her... I mean, seriously, dude. Come but on. He, he, so did, he didn't just talk to her. He actually put his hand on her thigh, ah. which was grotesque ah. enough, even without the hair tie <laughs> and the <laughs> snot. Oh, oh, oh God. I would oh. walk through a car wash yeah. after that. Well, <laughs> what? Did, oh, Naked. I'd walk through a car wash. Naked. <laughs> Wait, I've got that picture in my head. Okay, hey, that's the quote second. of the day. Uh, you know what's amazing? Let me just provide context. Some of us here, you know, it's it's been 20 years. But this was, this was the heart of America in 2001. He led America, and we loved America. Rudy Giuliani. What has happened? What happened? What happened? Listen, this is what happens when you, they don't get your meds right, you know? It's uh <laughs> it's just it's time for him to revisit and I think I mean I think his doctors in his pocket clearly. Or this hey. age old thing, money. Money. This is what happens when your head grows mm -hmm. bigger. Like in size. Have you guys noticed that the last couple of months Rudy Giuliani's head has like grown? Is is that why there was leakage? Uh, <laughs> right. Leakage out right. of his head because he's pretty ballsy. Maybe. That's vile. That's not true. Oh, God. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, Rudy, you you got what you deserved. The uh, All of the hosts here at It's Happening Out says, nah, it's you got what you deserve. And there's been no update as to his condition at yeah. the moment. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. suspect. Well, it, it, I, here's another guilty thought. I talked about the guilt over my growing hatred for Donald Trump. Is it wrong of me to go, dude, I'm not sure that I am, I'm thinking the best thoughts of you in the hospital in COVID-19. Does that make me a bad person? Yes. Does it? I don't know. There's, I mean, I've heard people say, hey, I hope he passes from this. That's awful, people. Yeah, I would never you don't say, say that. that. I know. That just puts bad juju on you. Yeah. 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 I just want them to all to become totally irrelevant. I'd, I'd, I'd like to <sighs> just away. evaporate. Is that a bad thing? They yeah. could just evaevaporate? Yeah. All right. Or become incontinent. Something like that. Yeah. Just incontinent. Well, I think, I think <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty what sure. What Rudy Giuliani to become incontinent? I'm pretty sure Rudy's yeah. pretty yeah. Way, I know, right? <laughs> That's what I think. In addition now. to his expanding growth, Growing head, his head became incontinent. <laughs> coming down the sides of his head. Oh dear, dear. All right, I'm moving on. I'm going to crash the show. I can tell already. All right, question number three. I'd swallow that. Is it a happy New Year's? 2020 was the worst ever. I think 2021 is going to be the best ever. Bookends, worst to best in one day. 
country. It can't get no worse. It that's can't get saying. no worse. That's what I'm saying. I agree with you. <laughs> and saying. with Biden in the realm, uh, Biden heading the way of January 20th, it's going to be the best year ever. I have optimism for 2021. I'm abstaining from that. I, I, t I plead the fifth on that. And why is that, Dale? Well, I just, you know, every year everybody says, this is going to be my year. This is going to be the best year. And 2020 was optimally that because people said perfect vision year. And I just determined as we were moving into this year, I'm not even going to breathe the word of what next year is going to be. I'm not going to even <laughs> put a kind of Because it's mm. a jinx or what? I just, I, just, I just made a commitment to myself. I wasn't even going to go there mm. because just let it be what it's going to be and let's just get out of this year. <laughs> yeah, right. Perfect, perfect. With it, perfect vision, my butt. I mean, come on. <laughs> Al got glasses. My wife got glasses. I don't know who else needed glasses or didn't need glasses before 2020, but all of a sudden, cha ching is there any big thing uh, that you're going to be doing in 2021? You. Me? Uh, yeah. Oh, I got I glasses. Anything big that you're going to be well, doing? Well, speaking of big, <laughs> I'm going to get my big implants out at the beginning Whoa. of 2021. Oh, oh, you are? Wow. So, wow. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you you and yourself. Michelle Visage, uh, out of the same mo. She's Jersey. You're Jersey. Jersey. She's loud. You're loud. Loud! And you both are taking the same action. It's time, baby. It's time. Hey, well, listen, wow. Rihanna is already in line for your, uh, <laughs> you know, for she's your gonna boobs. Them so. on, she's going to put them on her butt. The Wait, uh, Rihanna, you, did you just say you've called for Faye? Yep. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, I'll, I'll take them. I'll take them. She's going to be in the, o with them? in the OR waiting. <laughs> really? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Well, that's what Trans I could do. Recipient. A little larceny <laughs> at, at times. Um, I want to come back to uh, something I thought was interesting that Rihanna said. Can optimism make something happen? Can you think positive thoughts and go, I'm optimistic. 2020 was horrible. 2021 is going to be fantastic. And the reason it is is because I'm optimistic. Can we will it? Our optimism will the end result. Do you I always believe true? in that. I believe yeah. what you put forth positivity into the world, usually positivity comes back. Not always, obviously, because the world's going to do what the world's going to do, but at least you try to have an optimistic outlook and a positive outlook on what's in front of you, necessarily not what's going to come or what's behind you. Yeah, I you totally know? believe that the thought is, thought is creative, so we create our reality. Mm -hmm. And how we also respond to our outer experiences, how, how we react or we don't react, how we create a reaction is, is a great part of how we experience it. That being said, <laughs> I'm still not going to commit to like 2021 is going to be my year. I'm just not doing it. It's really interesting. Uh, well, I think that that might be true, but damn it, I'm just not going to do it. I'm, not. I'm just not going <laughs> to do it. Not, not for, in commit. terms of 2021 expectations. You know? Right. And the right. truth is, is our thoughts have power, guys. Yeah. Okay? Oh, absolutely. We have the power to manifest everything we desire in our hearts. So what do you desire in 2021? And let's just start there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Josie, you're a business owner. Yeah. Uh, you have a, a fantastic <laughs> restaurant right on historic and, and world famous Welton Drive for the LGBTQ community. So yummy. 20, so yummy. So yummy. Uh, 2020 has been horrendous for restaurants. Oh horrendous. Yes. Yeah, so awful. From an, from an industry standpoint, yeah. horrendous. Yes. Do you have optimism for 2021 that it's just going to roar back? Listen, like all things, okay, you know, right now we're going to have to get through this economic hump. That's for sure. There's not a lot of expendable cash out there for people to enjoy those luxuries of life. Restaurants fall in that uh, category. Unfortunately, I'm a part of that. But let me tell you something, you know, most small businesses, most small restaurants are created by entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs are the, there are the spirit and the heartbeat of this country, guys. And we are in a innovative and we adapt. So this is the time when we all get to work together and we'll make it through. Maybe my profits won't we'll be as large as they were two years ago, but we're going to get through this moment. You know, I read just this week um, uh, for New Yorkers, take, take a little victory, a small little victory lap, Chef Josie, uh, for Bubbles and Pearls uh, in New York City um, already before the end of the year, already happened. 1,000 restaurants have closed permanently in Manhattan. 
1,000. Ow, you don't have to go too far. That's you go you go to Calle Ocho in Miami, there is for rent, for rent, for rent, and little places that were amazing yeah. um, back in, the, you know, and just a few months palm. ago. Yeah. And, and I just want to say this, you know, for everyone Obviously. out there who wants to support the restaurant and service industry, you can go and hashtag all your posts with Save Restaurants. Go to saverestaurants.org, I believe it is, and sign the petition because awesome. we're, we're, we're trying to pressure uh, the government, uh, the Congress, to look at us like, you know, our industry as an industry who needs a little hand right yeah, now. Yeah, it's true because yeah, the, the government has, the restaurant industry has not, and the entertainment industry, and uh, the arts, the cultural specter has not been a part of that conversation of helping people out. Yeah. And that's you can really bail out the bank, alarming you can bail out the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on to an interesting and unique question number four. Now, all of the hosts here tonight at It's Happening Out, <laughs> we're getting ready to do something unique. We have never done this before, but it's the holidays. And what is the best way to celebrate the holidays? Well, McDonald's told us this week, here's how you should celebrate the holidays. And so we thought, well, that'll be interesting. Let's see if McDonald's is right. And we would celebrate the holidays via McDonald's lead uh -oh. in a unique and special I'd swallow that. I'm worried. Now, for two and a half years that it's happening out, it's always been shots. But for tonight, McDonald's has told us the way you celebrate the holidays and the end of the year <laughs> is their McRib. You're kidding me. You did so, this out? I didn't no. know I'm a vegan. I'm a no. vegan. No. <laughs> we don't know if that's the way to celebrate the holidays, but let's give it a try is and it actually see what it is all about, and this is the actual and real McRib. This is fresh off of the, fresh off, I'm holding up right there. That is the McRib. I, I cannot vouch for what this is in the sandwich. Is it, is I'm it so really? upset I'm vegan! <laughs> is I'm it rib meat? Oh! <laughs> Dale, wait, I, Dale and Joe's I'm not even vegan. licking this thing, okay? I don't want to hear y'all's problems. <laughs> I don't want to hear about y'all's problems. Anyway, <laughs> These are McDonald's, our choices. McDonald's, good. McDonald's is telling us that uh, for a limited time, we're bringing uh, McRib back out of their uh, different... Um, they're different rotation, and we're doing it as a celebration for the holidays <laughs> and the transition into 2021. And so we ask, I'd swallow that. Now you've got a vodka shot and you've got the McRib. I'd swallow that. The special surprise <laughs> for the end of 2020 is the McRib. Do you agree? And are you going to try live on this show the McRib. Viewers, here, smell this. <laughs> here. <laughs> Josie and I are uh, um, going to be a pass on Yeah, that. but guys, okay, you guys are vegan. This is not meat. You can eat it. Uh, I know. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Say, okay. Real, right? I but know. When they change the chicken nuggets, I'm wait. like, they still taste the same. Wait. <laughs> No, 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 wait, there's other possibilities. You could taste the bread. Is the no, bread. but let me t let me tell you, okay? <laughs> I, this is one of my favorite sandwiches from uh, McDonald's, from just so you know. Gone by. Okay, yeah. yes. And I may not try it tonight, but I didn't even, I always wonder, when do they release the McRib? Uh, well, too late. So now, guys, McDonald's, work on the vegan version of this. No yeah. way. Oh. Let me make sure I'm clear. Well. Josie says no. She's not, I won't swallow that. No. Nope. And Dale is saying no, I won't won't swallow that. Correct. Ariana, what are you doing? Are you I'll swallow uh, a drink? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the McRib, are you doing no, the not McRib? Me, it's that. No. All right. And and all right, Faye, you're it's, it smells like my wife's knee sleeves after CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I'm into that funky stuff, so I oh, will have you're, a bite. You're gonna try it. Here we go. Listen, it's it's great. Now you're so, gonna from be our what critic. I remember. I never had one. Oh, I, I love how the Jersey girl's lips are just smell. Oh, and it's dripping out of the sandwich. <laughs> 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 hey, take an extra bite for me, Faye, okay? Just for nostalgia. Josie wants to try it. No, I've had many of these. Make Josie, let's make out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's delicious. All right, That's give so us hot. the review. It's so hot, eh? Ed, it's really hot. I'm, it's a little I'm crunchy. It's a little crunchy. I don't know. Is that like... Is it supposed to be crunchy? Is that like gummy in it? Like, what is it? Oh, that's disgusting. It's a little... 
I don't know if I'd give this to my dog, but I'll finish eating it. I yeah. think Are you going to eat it? Really? Uh, yeah. You I don't, like I don't let food it's go to waste, man. Sauce. I used to be on food stamps. Right. I don't understand. Babe. <laughs> I still have my food stamps. <laughs> Faye, I love you very much, so I'm going to hand you a napkin. Well, because you've got barbecue. <laughs> All over, you got barbecue. All over. This is how now, I eat everything. Normally, do gay men work completely okay on that, but it's a little different. What about you, Al? Are you, are you partaking? The way. I am not He's partaking. Not no. oh. I took the shot, but I'm not, uh, I'm not doing it. Okay, I'll take the shot, but I'm not partaking yeah, right. either. Exactly. Dietary <laughs> restrictions, McDonald's. All right, let me tell you, when I went to Was McDonald's, there with that? <laughs> when I went to the McDonald's uh, here in Central Fort Lauderdale, a commercial and Dixie Highway, that is Gay Ground Zero. It's on, on, on Gay Corner. Uh, had it. And uh, we ordered uh, these McRibs. And they came in the bag. When I reached in, I, this is honest to God truth, when I reached in for the first box of the first sandwich, the sandwich was half out of the box. And it was barbecue sauce. All <laughs> <over>. <laughs> How many dogs were chasing your car down the street? Please tell me. Oh my God. So, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from wow. McDonald's. Uh, yeah. that's a, all a right. Big rib in my teeth. Exactly. You did great, Faye. Yeah. And all of these other wussies uh, to help well, all of the rest of you. All right. So that's our game. I'd swallow that. We I've done four shots. I don't know about y'all. I did four. I'm, yeah. I'm doing pretty good now. I did two. I don't know how all I did. All right. So <laughs> Happening Out Television. Let's move on. Happening Out Television and its Happening Out sponsors. Some of the nation's most important LGBTQ events. We are happy to not... Uh, see, I've done four shots. They're beginning <laughs> to affect me already. Get it together. Uh, <laughs> if I were like. closer to you, I'd pound you in the side. <laughs> yes, okay? Then, like, uh, to not only discuss LGBTQ pop culture celebrities, but also to talk about our local celebrities here in South Florida. And tonight we have a special treat for our viewers. And this year, Christmas is calamity. Calamity. Watch this. Hello, welcome! My name is Taylor is Mack, and guess what? We're having a virtual holiday show this year. It's called Holiday Sauce Pandemic. It's a virtual show. There's going to be Stephanie Christiane, or what the incredible singer, uh, the queen of Detroit Blues, Thornetta Davis. There's international boy, let's star Tigger, with the exclamation point. Baby Jesus is coming to join us for our number two, right? And even Machine Dazzle is here today. Look, oh, hello, Machine. Hi, how are you? Oh my goodness, Taylor, it took a pandemic, but I finally found my lover. Just look at the size of that root vegetable. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's COVID! Oh, pandemic! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh my god, so cute! Well, oh uh, this uh, Saturday, uh, as we told you, we are definitely live. Um, <laughs> this Saturday, lie. December 12th at 7 p.m., Live Arts Miami presents Taylor Max Holiday Sauce Pandemic, oh, a virtual vaudeville blending of music, film, burlesque, and random acts of fabulousness for this most unusual holiday season. Taylor Mac invites longtime collaborators and surprise special guests to celebrate the holidays in all of their dysfunction. Gosh, it sounds like my house. <laughs> as well as in conjunction uh, with the launch of the Miami Dade College Pride Scholarship, where all of the donations contribute to the lives of vulnerable students facing economic and personal obstacles. As a tribute to Mac's drag mother, each institution presenting holiday sauce will honor a local LGBTQ elder. People like Dale and oh. Josie. Collectively known as the Queens. Thanks, uh, In South Florida, <laughs> local HIV and AIDS and bisexual rights activist Luigi Ferra uh, will be honored as Queen at the most subversive event of the season, where they ask you to join the fabulous after party in their honor with special appearances from Miami's own drag pantheon, including drag queens, DJ, DJs uh, Adora and Carla Croquetta. 
Oh, and I love their love surprise it. guest yeah. from Holiday Sauce. Mm -hmm. Tonight, LGBTQ elder Luigi Farah is joining us here on It's Happening Out. Luigi, Luigi is co-founder and former director of health services of the fantastic charity organization Pride Lines yeah. and is currently the sexual minority health coordinator for the Florida Department of Health. It's Happening Out is pleased to welcome <laughs> LGBTQ elder honoree. I love that laughter. Luigi. Here. Welcome, <laughs> Luigi. Ho, 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 Santa Claus is <laughs> your welcome, welcome. Hi, I feel Luigi. Like I want to sit Tropical around. gay Santa. Yes, very gay, very <laughs> Santa. Yes. Welcome to It's Happening Out. Tell us a little bit about this. Of course, it caught our attention and we wanted to help support you. Um, uh, this is one of the gayest things I have ever seen <laughs> in my life. Yeah. Tell us about what you're doing. So, um, the the uh, holiday sauce show has has been on for for many years. Miami Live Arts has been involved with it uh, again for many years. Um, what many people don't know is that in in addition to being a fantastic actor, playwright, director, a screenwriter, Taylor Mac is also a radical fairy, and radical fairies are all that fabulousness that you saw on display. Um, what many people don't know is that Miami also has a radical fairy house and mm -hmm. I live in it and I um, uh, host <laughs> folks from all over uh, the country to come to South Florida and visit and we do shows in the backyard, uh, poolside and, and so we want people that are looking for community and support um, to join us for the show and learn a little bit more about radical fairy community. Um, we, we, fairies have a gift that I like to call social security. <laughs> social security. We, 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 we come together and we provide for each other and take care of each other. And that is the strength of family of choice. And that is one of the things that uh, Taylor really wants to um, emphasize with his show is the importance and the power of family of choice and building community mm -hmm. for each other. Love now, it. how uh, how do uh, people uh, uh, watch um, the show and participate in the show? Tell us how you go about doing that. Um, well, you could go to Live Arts, uh, my MD, MDC Live Arts, uh, and and get the link there. Um, you can also go to Taylor Max website, which is taylormac.org. That's right. pretty easy. Yeah. Um, and uh, both from there, or you can go to my Facebook page or to the Radical Fairy Miami's Facebook group um, and uh, link through all those different spaces. Now, Luigi, I know there's a lot of Gen Zers and a lot of millennials that are going, huh, what's going on here? And, and the tongue in cheek of the humor that's being presented <laughs> here uh, in, in this presentation for the holidays. And of course that is true by using the phrase vaudeville. Uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. they have no idea yes. what vaudeville Love is. Love it. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about the comparison of what's happening at uh, Taylor Mac Holiday Sauce and, and um, uh, entertainment expressions like yeah. vaudeville. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, so um, vaudeville or burlesque has always been a subversive and a very queer art form. We've always been there, right? Um, so this is sort of reclaiming that art form and uh, putting it virtual uh, in you know in, in a virtual package so we can bring 17 cities around the country together and each city is um, honoring one of their elders in the house of queens um, during the after parties we will each get a crown <laughs> and um, there'll be um, local performers and we hope folks will um, you know serve themselves a cocktail during the show if they partake and have one during the after party and just make a night of it. Um, you know, sit with your loved ones around the TV set and have a great show. Um, the quality of the show that you're going to see by Taylor Mac is amazing. And the local after party will be a lot of fun. I've actually participated in several local uh, events virtually and have really enjoyed it and 
you know, we had set things to go for two hours and three hours in, we were still going strong and having a great time and everybody laughing. Um, and that's really what uh, community is about, what family is about. Um, you know, many queer folk, when they come out, um, there is a certain distance created between themselves and their family of origin. Or, you know, in the worst case, there's outright rejection. Um, you know, for some of us, it's just the withdrawal of family support and we don't get those opportunities in life. So it's really important to have a uh, family of choice that can provide that support and that strength for you. That's, again, what radical theories like to call social security. Yes, absolutely. And uh, remind us of uh, the date and time again of the event. So it'll be this Saturday, December 12th, starting at 7. Uh, and then the after party, I believe, starts around 8.30. Yeah. It sounds and and looks absolutely hilarious. You're, you're yeah. hitting a bullseye of what we need uh, on December 12th uh, in LGBTQ America. Congratulate, uh, congratulations for that. And Luigi, I have to say, everyone here at It's Happening Out is so excited to finally, finally learn that Santa is gay. I knew it. Oh, hey. hey. yes. I knew it when I was four. <laughs> I knew it. I, knew I it. just right. knew it. Right. And, oh, what are you going to bring me this year, Santa? I, I, uh... I remember as a child sitting on Santa and him smelling like lube. It totally <laughs> makes sense now. Yeah. Does, that, does, sense. That, does that make Mrs. Claus a fruit fly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And I want to be a, a, a Ferrari. Uh, or uh, a Ferrari. A Ferrari. <laughs> well, that's what I want you to bring me, Santa. That's different. Well, uh, Luigi, uh, good luck in the event. It sounds and looks like so much fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, South Florida and America tune in um, this Saturday at 7 o'clock. Uh, you can get it through uh, Miami Dade College's website or Taylor Max website, or you can go to Luigi's Facebook page. I'm sure he would love you to come to the Facebook page and he'll talk to you privately. And if Santa asks you to do that, don't do that. <laughs> that would not be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, uh, we are so thrilled that you've been with us tonight at It's Happening Out. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. All right, well, let's, uh, let's continue uh, to move on. And uh, it's happening out. Uh, we like to bring attention to the LGBT community uh, to the best thing of the week. And this week, it's called 21 Male Nudes and Portraits <laughs> by... You have uh, my attention. Uh, yeah, by <laughs> photographer. I'm sure Dale will have comment on this. Uh, Faye and I are like, what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the McRib? <laughs> 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 what about that boob dog? We're bring it any moment. Uh, this is a new um, book uh, by photographer uh, Nick Mesh, and uh, we're going to show you some pictures here. I, I believe it's just the picture. Yeah. Now you have to remember, while at it's happening out, we can do almost anything. We have covered. This is uh, these are nudes and portraits. Uh, they're very beautiful. Uh, Dale Stein is uh, right now thinking about what he's going to put in next <laughs> at uh, right. mm -hmm. Hottie of the Day. Yeah. Well, but it's uh, Nick Mesh's uh, new book. Wow. And it's beautiful. called <laughs> One, One so, Good Book, all right, Male all right. Portraits and Nudes. Um, beautiful. I've actually bought two of these as Christmas presents. I bet you uh, have. Oh, you bought two good, <laughs> two good books. like, I'll swallow that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, well, wait, see, I do that, but I will. What's the joke there? I, I didn't hear <laughs> any joke because it's, it's. I'm thirsty and hungry now. Yes. Uh, so, what do y'all think? Uh, what, do you think that this is uh, a place that we still go to in the LGBTQ community? That there's valuable <laughs> places still for this kind of art and photography and and these kind of books? Oh, I absolutely believe so, because it is it's it is sexual in nature, of course, very sexual. But it's beautiful. Yeah. So and I know I speak for gay men, and we are, of course, drawn to the sexuality of it, but also the beauty of it. What would be the the comparable thing for in the lesbian community? Do you have that? 
girls? Do you have? No, we don't, but we should make it happen. Uh, Faye, you in on this I'm project? In. Okay, let's like, <laughs> wait, wait, let's make that book. happen. One good book, a new female edition. <laughs> well, photo shoot at Home Depot. Home Depot. Uh -huh. It's interesting. Uh, Dale's question's interesting to me because I had never thought about that before. We have lots. I have like, uh, no kidding. I have at least <laughs> 50 magnificent coffee table books. Um, of, of men, uh, sports, uh, all kinds mm -hmm. of different kinds of things. I've never seen one for women, actually. Yeah, you know, Madonna made one back in the early 90s, right? Sex, right? I have the book. I just started impersonating her. Yeah. yeah. It's my queen. Yeah. And, and, well. and, you know, listen, I love, I love just artistic, um, uh, you know, I guess, uh, whatever. I don't know even how you would say that, but it's like a, a, an artistic capture, a capture of men in all of their glory. I mean, even myself, one of the biggest lesbians on the block, okay? <laughs> I appreciate this for what it is. You know, these men, they have these beautiful physiques. The lighting is perfect. I can see the sensuality, sexuality of the photo. But the reality of it is, is they're just really beautiful uh, photos. Oh, they're all um, filtered, Josie. They're all filtered. That's you know, the, not the true. Male They're figure, like 300 pounds. The male man. figure That's has been true. studied for so many years and in, used in art classes, I think much more than the, than the feminine form. And I don't, there's a history there, and that's a, another conversation to have. But I think that we've seen much more of the male form in general. Yeah. throughout the years yeah you, you know what else is coming up to mind though too is how the women's woman's body is almost pornographic and the man's body the male the men's body is is can be art right and you know that's something for us to look at like why 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 aren't there um, the these, double standard like, coffee double table standard. folks of women but yeah. hmm. well uh, we bring uh, best thing of the week our, our segment here to your attention um, Nick Mesh's new book um, and uh, male nudes in portraits um, and uh, would make a perfect Christmas present. If you're looking for something unique, uh, brand new uh, hardback uh, edition from Nick. So to speak. Hard so to speak. Hard. Ah, he said hard. hard. Whoa. Ah. 14 years old. My goodness. Oh, wait. <laughs> I must be hard. All right. I, lo I love eighth grade. Yes, exactly. All right. Let's move out to best thing of the week and catch up on the news from Hollywood each week. We do a story in the world of entertainment that catches our attention, and we call it Celebrity Hot Topic of the Week. And we're getting ready to talk about RuPaul. Oh, power. Oh. Oh, well, I know he's really a missing this conversation. This week, <laughs> uh, because this week we suggest in our Celebrity Hot Topic, move over RuPaul. Ooh. Because there is a new Brazilian drag show, and it is hit Netflix. And we're showing you it uh, right now. Uh, we... Uh, we would love to show you uh, the sound of this, but of course the copyright is uh, pretty stringent uh, here. Uh, Netflix has launched this new six-part <laughs> series called A Queen is Born, starring Brazilian queens Alexa Twister and Gloria Groove. The, st uh, the series is broadcast in Portuguese, but through the wonderful magic of Netflix, bringing products like this from all over the world to American consumers in English, it literally does a pretty good job of lip syncing mm. for an English audience. Wow. What do you think about this growing worldwide explosion of drag and especially how it affects the world's perception of the LGBT community because we're seeing it all over the Ever. world. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. More visibility, more competition. That's all good. We've got amazing queens all over the world all over. that can compete. There's an in abundance. This. Why not? And mind blow to be able to see it in English because that would have really messed with my head yeah. for it to be in right. Portuguese, me reading the subtitles yeah. the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. Any and any other thoughts? Um, I think that just the, the explosion of drag is just such a now not even just a cultural thing. It's just become a worldwide global global um explosion of artistic creativity positivity music art costumes glitter because everybody loves glitter but and you can't get rid of it no you can't <laughs> trust, trust me i've tried uh and i think it's amazing i think it's great you know it's funny uh when i started um they're getting ready to do on january 1st another rupaul marathon yeah. I'll have 300 people send me messages going, oh my God, you in season three, blah, 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 uh, from RuPaul's Drag Race. It's interesting to me, early seasons of RuPaul, uh, when it launched, I had so many friends that said, oh, the only reason drag is popular in the LGBTQ community is it's cheap entertainment. 
and remember our singers, Christine W. and mm -hmm. and on mm -hmm. and Deborah Cox and et cetera and so on. And at one point, a tipping point happened where more drag queens became more popular in LGBT events and venues than than other forms of inter entertainment. And today, you would not say that. You would not say drag is. Uh, so prevalent because it's cheap entertainment. We don't think that way anymore. Years ago, we did. It's because we enjoy it, and the talent is incredibly immense. And now it's not just for LGBTQ. You see the housewives, the straight oh kids God, watching totally. it. That's amazing. It's, yeah. it's not just our community embracing drag. It's everyone. And I think one of the most amazing things about it, and one of the most important aspects of it, is what it brings to the youth, the really young the kids are watching the hope that it brings the, the visibility and the exposure to the world of the lgbtq community yeah. and the the many facets of it yeah, i think that's a really important when i was uh crowned miss palm beach pride in 2018 we did a uh story time at the uh local community center and i got to read like three little uh three little pig rendition to a room of 80 little four to five to six mm. children and they were all like so staring at me like I was a god and I'm like I'm just a man in a dress yeah. no, <laughs> no. but it was just and then the parents that came with them they were asking all kinds of questions why do you do this is this something that you can make money at is this just so that you can be on stage and I got to actually meet these parents that are now if their child does end up gay trans non-binary they now have an example of what a gay person is whether they are gay straight bi trans yeah and they get they feel more comfortable with their children they have a yeah, we work. encourage everybody uh, to look at this new series at netflix you're you're going to be shocked because it is quite entertaining completely in portuguese but you will forget because the uh the english over uh word uh, Portuguese word is done so amazing. Uh, that's our discussion of entertainment. Uh, we want to next report on uh, the fact that Happening Out Television Network helps support our LGBTQ community. It's been a major commitment of ours. An example is Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. We are broadcasting from our permanent set in supporting that partnership. The network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ religious broadcast in the entire world. Uh, with more than 30,000 watching every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern for their Sunday service, and it's totally live. We encourage you to tune in. Our campaign of sponsorship proudly supports Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this. <music> Hi, I'm Dr. Howard Grossman. I'm the medical director for Midway Specialty Care in Wilton Manors, and I'm the medical advisor for Queer News Tonight. And Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Well, we'd also like to thank our set designer, Concepto Modern Living, here in Fort Lauderdale for making this set in this amazing queer church campus possible. And finally, we'd like to thank Happening Out Hotel sponsor, Best Western I-95 Fort Lauderdale. This is the closest and best choice to the famous Wilton Drive, and our host and our guests stay at this LGBTQ ally partner. We encourage you to stay here when visiting South Florida. Next, let's move on to our segment, What's On Your Mind? Each week, we ask our host to tell us in just 30 seconds what is important to them this week. But remember, you have just 30 seconds or you're going to hear my bell, which oh. sounds just like that. So uh, tell us what's on your mind this week, Faye? So you guys know that I'm a YouTube host, subscribe today to Faye What, but I also have a doggy sitting company and I also rescue pets as well. So Christmas is coming. So for all you people that want to buy, uh, buy puppies for your bratty kids, do not do it. 
go out oh. there and get a dog from the shelter. I do not want to be rescuing your dog come January mm -hmm. because they're making a mess all over your house. Don't be a dick, tater. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Hashtag adopt, don't shop. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Chef Josie, what's on your mind this week? Oh, man, what's on my mind this week is, you know, life keeps life in, guys. And, uh, you know, what happens with that and what I'm, I'm speaking into right now is the fact that we might, like, put our all our little ducks in a row. We might have this idea of what life is supposed to look like. But life lives, regardless of your, you know, desires. So what it is is an invitation to relax, to go with the flow, and go into the new year with your intentions straight, uh, clear, and listen to your heart. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Rihanna Patron, what's on your mind this week? Well, what's on my mind is um, what's where's drag taking everybody these days? Uh, drag is forever evolving into new forms, whether it's bearded queens, it's straight girls that start doing drag just so that they can accentuate their artistic creativity and see where that takes everybody. That's what's on my mind. Also, make sure you come and stop by and see me on Wednesdays at Propaganda, which is tonight at 10 p.m. And on Sundays, my new show, Rihanna's Variety Game Show, where we get to play fun, fun games and eat and drink and have a good time. Rihanna just proved that she's a drag queen by doing plugs. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> Not right. one, but two. Uh, exactly <laughs> right. And Dale Stein, what's on your mind this week? Well, I'm going to go to the political arena once again here. And I've been excited about watching uh, President Biden, yeah, I said that, uh, <laughs> announcing all his nominees for the cabinet and such. I feel I'm watching that more this time than ever in my, my many decades on this planet. It's like I'm watching the Golden Globe nominees. You know, I'm, I'm that excited. I'm that gay excited, like the Oscar nominees. But it's just very exciting to see him nominating people who have thought, <laughs> thought processes, experience, knowledge, wisdom they believe in science yeah. so it's just been very exciting to watch and i'm looking forward to watching even more of it all right well excellent that's what's on our host's mind this week uh let's move on if we were standing around the lgbtq water cooler right now up next would be what we are all talking about and we refer to this as hot topic of the week a very interesting one uh, of our hot topic of the week and we haven't really had a conversation uh, like this at It's Happening Out Before, but a major new study has come out that says lesbians are much more likely to divorce than gay men, according to new data. And we're going to show you a little bit about this. New data from the United Kingdom suggests that same-sex female couples are much more likely to divorce than same-sex male couples. According to the Office of National Statistics in Britain, almost three-quarters of same-sex divorces in England and Wales in 2019 were between lesbian couples. While same-sex divorces account for less than 1% of divorces in England and Wales, the ONS did say that rates are increasing, reflecting the increasing size of same-sex married population since its legalization in 2014. This happens to be the fourth consecutive year that female couples accounted for three-fourths of all same-sex divorces in the United Kingdom. This is particularly stark when lesbian same-sex marriage only accounts for four out of 10 LGBTQ oh God, marriages, <laughs> making the divorce number all the more significant. 65% of lesbian divorces stated the most common reason cited for divorce was unreasonable behavior of the partner. What do y'all think what about that this uh, new report? What do I think? In, uh, in the uh, behavior uh, of the partner. That is so obtuse. I yes, mean, what, right. What does that uh, mean? Listen, my wife drives me crazy, and we've been happily married for three years. I don't have it in me for to get a divorce or to get another marriage, so I can't even begin to understand <laughs> that mess. But it's England. They have awful weather. Lesbians don't like bad weather. That's what's going on. That's why they are divorcing. It's plain it's, and simple. It's unique in the UK. Is that what you just said? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I mean, I, I don't know about you, uh, you know, Faye, but I personally would love to see this number here in the United States because the reality of it is this. Ladies, why don't you slow your roll, okay? And, like, you know, take a little time to get to know someone. You know, maybe if we didn't just, like, automatically fall in love with each other and, like, you know, move in with each other in, like, day three. 
then maybe, you know, maybe we would see these quirks that we were just like deal breakers from the beginning. That's the reality of it. You know, what? what's the rush? What's what? the rush? What's the joke, Josie? What's the joke? What does a lesbian bring on her first date? A U-Haul. Oh! Okay? The second, the second, the joke the is, second is specific. It's the <laughs> truth, you know? Well, no, it used to be the second date, Dale. Now it's the first date. And funny enough, me and my wife on our first date, we were in Wilton Drive and there was a huge U-Haul truck and we had to take a picture in front of it. Like, uh, is this uh, a sign, God? Is this a sign? A year and a half later, we were married. I'm just saying. I was there. I was at the wedding. You know, <laughs> uh, when uh, Chef Josie uh, joined It's Happening Out, we had lunch in talking about <laughs> her uh, joining, and she, she'll remember this vividly. Oh. I was so shocked because when we were at lunch, she talked so matter-of-factly <laughs> about the lesbian community and the desires that she had for the lesbian community. Uh, it was so refreshing to me because as privileged white gay guy, I had to be very, very careful of how I express in the LGBTQ. And you were. So let's just put that out there. <laughs> I probably you know. didn't do a great job. Thank <laughs> you for calling me out. <laughs> but it's interesting to me because uh, Josie uh, used phrases. I remember this clearly of, uh, of uh, where are you showing up? Are you going to show up? Uh, are you going to spend money? Are you going to be visible? Are you going to participate in our community? And I wonder, I wonder that if this, st this study and this report doesn't kind of scratch at that surface, that mm. women, uh, same-sex women and couples are getting together so fast and isolating so quickly that that same kind of philosophy of, uh, of show up is, is happening in reverse here. And they, um, uh, the, the LGBTQ charity Stonewall and the National Health Department in Britain summarized their observations that they thought that uh, same-sex women were dating faster, getting in relationship faster, and therefore marrying faster, and that that was a leading contributor to the significant increase in divorce. Maybe it is a situation where women are not participating in the breadth of community in the same way that gay men are. Relationships take work. Marriage take work. And that's the that's the deal. Like women get together and they want to get married and that's it. You know, um, my wife is not my best friend. I have a best friend and I have a wife. There is a huge difference mm -hmm. between both their roles. And I think that's why we'll be married forever because honestly, it's she it's I, I just can't get over how most lesbians rush into these things. I didn't think I'd ever get married. I didn't think anybody wanted to marry me. And here I am, married and happy. I'm uh -huh. curious, do y'all think the statistics that are being reported in the UK are accurate? I, I don't know how they okay. could not, but does it surprise you yeah. that it is overwhelming in terms of the percentage of divorce among same-sex women versus same-sex men? Does it surprise you? I guess not. Well, and you know what, if you look at like gay men, and maybe Dale, you guys can help, you know, Al, and, and well, I'm not going to say you, Rihanna, because Rihanna, tonight, you're a woman, so you're, you're with <laughs> us, me, okay? Yeah. You're a lady. Well, but, I'll go to through mine soon. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, when you think about it, it's like gay men are out there, they're they're dating casually, they're dating casually and hooking casually up. and hooking up. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. you said it, not me. But, <laughs> you know, they're like yeah. dating casually and we're, you know, we see that it's like, okay, we're having fun. And at some point, the fun is becomes not enough. With women, it's inherent for us, we're the nurturers, to start building a home, right? right. Mm -hmm. And when we find someone that we vibe with, we think, oh my God, look at the possibility. I'm just simply, again, reminding women that they're, you know, maybe we could just like slow it down a little bit, you know, get to know each other and go out to restaurants and date, you know, that would help those women own businesses in your community. And also, you know, like the nightclubs, like all the, have you seen a lesbian club in your neighborhood recently? I'm just, I'm just asking you, you or, know, or a friend. Or, or women, you know, take the gay boys route and just have casual sex, sleep with everybody, don't get married and that's I know, it. I know plenty of lesbians who do that, but probably not as many as sort of as gay men. Right. Mm -mm. But what, what are the dates on those stats, uh, Al? The, this is brand new. Brand new. Uh, so, this report was only in the last week. So COVID is, ha has to have some kind of impact uh, on the, that. This number is through 2019. They haven't oh. even reported. Oh, they haven't gone to COVID. And, oh. and <laughs> and this is the fourth year in a row, 75% of all of the uh, divorces since legalization in the UK in 2014 
uh, uh, same-sex women are overwhelmingly getting divorced compared to same-sex men. Mark my words. When the 2020 study comes out, it'll be higher. Yeah. Oh, much higher. Because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. I, 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 so to the, the point of what both, both what Faye and, and Josie are saying, what, what can be done to implement, besides making the observation that you're making, what can be done to help the L of our community um, be more involved in terms of how relationships can be successful? Oh, uh, what, ooh, ooh, is there ooh, anything? Let me, let me answer this <laughs> one. Let me, let me. Let me. Ooh, ooh. Okay, look, you know, it's called education. You know, women have to have a commitment. Our community, the lesbians in our community, uh, anyone, any woman who's identifying as lesbian, we have to have a commitment to healing ourselves. We have to be, we have to be willing to grow ourselves as personal development. We have to learn how to communicate and accept not only the people in our lives, but ourselves, accept ourselves fully love ourselves because I think that what is happening in in, in our community as, as women is that we bring to the table a lot of emotional baggage and that emotional baggage is being like uh, just dumped on each other and the reality of it is is that lesbians we really have uh, in the upcoming year we get to like heal ourselves we have to have a real commitment to connection and we have to understand the distinction of commitment and I have to agree with Josie. Like, you know, we Jerry Maguire it. Well, we meet somebody, you complete me. No, BS. Like, my wife didn't complete me. I was 100% without her, and together we are a power couple. That's how it should be. Do, do, you, do you agree with an observation? I, I, I certainly don't want this to sound offensive. But do you agree with the observation that gay men are much more when we meet that we want to sleep with you? Um, and, and if something comes from that, that's one thing. But that that uh, lesbian women want to relationship right from the very yeah. beginning. And as a result, they don't have the time of the development of, oh, I like that, and I like that, and I like that, and we've slept together 25 times before we even think about relationship. Is, do you think that that statement is true, or it's just completely a stereotype and off base? I mean, I think it's partially true. I don't think it's entirely true, but I do think that there's some truth to your statement, uh, clearly, right? You know, so there's, uh, I think there's a whole entire new generation of women who don't think like that. And that's, you know, your younger millennials and your Gen Zers and those guys who are coming up, love you guys. Um, so there's, there's that whole entire, and there's, you know, open-minded uh, lesbians and again, women who have spent some time I'm healing themselves and just growing through this process in my community, Gen Xers, and 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 moving on. So, uh, you know, it's a process, but it's a conversation that gets to be had, and I really appreciate us having it tonight. I, I was going to mm -hmm. say we've ne at it's happening out. We've never had a conversation like this ever, ever. Uh, we've been on the air for two and a half years mm -hmm. and never had a conversation like this. There's a start. That's a start. We've got to recommit. Good start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, interesting in terms of our hot topic tonight in reporting uh, what the UK is finding in terms of divorce rates. First off, isn't it great that in the United Kingdom and in the United States, we can begin to see uh, in the LGBTQ community statistics about marriage? Mm -hmm. We That's never fantastic. had that before. Never. That is ever. pretty cool. Amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's move on. And uh, there are lots of silly and important headlines in the news this week. And we're going to discuss them in our segment called Say by the Bell. But there's a twist. We are only going to discuss each topic for one minute. And at the end of the minute, you're going to hear the bell. There it is uh, to stop and move on. So here we go. The election of topic number one, headline number one. The election of two Senate seats in Georgia on January 5th will literally decide the Senate. So headline one, what happens in Georgia will affect every LGBTQ American. What do y'all think? Absolutely. Because we know what the Democrat platform is and we know what the Republican platform is. One is pro-equality and one is very specifically not. It's the opposite of that. So it's very important that we have a majority as Democrats. We have to be able to protect our LGBTQ plus from all aspects of life. We have to be able to protect them that. And then we can't do that if it goes either direction. 
Any on, predictions? Do y'all think we're going to win the two seats or we're not? Optimistic. Let's be optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how we can't win the two seats, okay? Because the people who are running for the GOP ticket have stolen money from, uh, you know, basically their constituencies uh, from and taken advantage of people uh, during a pandemic. They they had uh, were part of insider trading. They are. Leffler. I mean, Please. they are they are so scandalous. It's like ridiculous. And the fact that we continue to have support for them is ridiculous as well. <laughs> That's my Let's team. move on. Uh, oh, oh. I, I, I could, no, there we oh, go. Sheet. Quiet. All right. Uh, Red Floridians were excited this week on the news. Have you heard? Red Floridians were excited oh. this week on the news for Florida's governor election in 2022. Headline number two. Ivanka is rumored to be eyeing a run for Florida oh. governor, <laughs> even though she's never lived there, but she can qualify through Mar-a-Lago. What do y'all think? Ivanka for Florida governor. Better than DeSantis. <laughs> oh, dear. No. <laughs> I Might know. be. I mean, I don't <laughs> even know. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> but that's the, Just wow. pull the, that's pull the trigger. That that okay. My heart pull the trigger. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, maybe those rumors are true because her and Jared uh, just uh, just the, bought Miami, a thirty million Miami. dollar property on on Island Creek or Indian Creek, so um, Island and and yeah, I mean, who knows? These guys are. I would put it past anybody in that family to do something to try to get themselves in, in the limelight and get themselves in a way that and they can. There's thousands of posters in Manhattan that says not oh, wanted, no. Jared not wanted. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be received well in New York. Oh, City. I don't want them to move the capital to Palm Beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Rihanna right next to the governor of Palm Beach. Well, oh. It's going to be interesting. Uh, let's move on. Next headline. The 2022 House election <laughs> campaigns are going to be led for the first time by an LGBTQ congressman. So headline number three and Saved by the Bell. Pioneering gay congressman Sean Patrick Maloney has been elected to the most powerful new congressional role for 2022. What do y'all think? Yay, more representation. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So happy for that. Maloney is not baloney. <laughs> why, do, why do you think it's valuable to have a gay eye in this position for re-elections for the 2022 races? Anybody think it's important to have an LGBT perspective? Yes, of course. You know, our issues are always on the table. We saw that during the four years of Donald Trump in office. We were, you know, many of us were sitting uh, relaxed and, and really comfortable in our lives, thinking that, oh, we would always be protected. And the reality of it is, is that moving forward, elections are very powerful for our community. They are important. And we, as a LGBTQ community, really need to be present to who uh, our elected officials officials are, what their platforms are, and where they stand on our issues. Interesting. All right, next up, vaccinations are underway in Britain. Uh, what is happening? Headline number four in Saved by the Bell, we've watched the UK vaccinations begin today. Why is it slower in America? <laughs> well, it's slower in America because we've had no national leadership on the issue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we're so behind the curve in every aspect, it's not surprising at all to me we in the american public were told it's fake it's not real it doesn't exist it'll disappear on like its magic. own yeah. drink some bleach drink some bleach <laughs> yeah. yeah do you think it's going to roll out quickly uh, presumably uh, as early as tomorrow the fda is going to approve uh, the vaccine in the united states and it could roll out uh, some estimates are within 72 hours of the approval do you think that's going to happen tomorrow the fda is going to approve it I, I think so. I, I think, think it will so, happen. Yeah. I think it's going to happen. I'm curious. Uh, real quick uh, flash poll. Uh, are you going to take the no, only yes or no? At the moment it's available to you, you're going to take the vaccine. Josie? No. Dale? No. R R wow. Faye? No. Rihanna? No. Wow. Right. Al, 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 instantaneously, I've had COVID. I was one of the first to get COVID in, in South Florida. We lost a host at this show. It's happening out. Ron Berninski, 
I am definitely going to take uh, the. But you would be take the first if it were available to you. you would take if the it was first. available two days from now, I'd take uh, the vaccine. It was just yes or no. So Me yeah. and the Queen. Yeah. <laughs> of <England. laughs> All right. Uh, next up, new AP voters study proves that LGBTQ community in Arizona and Georgia carried the narrow election for Joe Biden. The red states went blue as a result. We thought Florida was going to do it. It wasn't. It was Arizona and Georgia. Headline, Joe Biden would have lost the election if not for the LGBTQ voters, according to the new AP analysis. What do y'all think? Shocking. We came out in full force. We had to. We went out there to vote because our lives depended on it. And we showed up. We suited up, put on our masks, washed our hands, washed our ass, and then voted. <laughs> and not just for the American public, but it is the largest outpouring of LGBTQ voters ever. Yeah. Including, it, especially in the younger millennial generation. Yeah. We're here. We're queer. And we're not going anywhere. Nope. We're not going anywhere. Exactly. All right. Those are our Saved by the Bell headlines. Let's move on. We are, uh, we are the LGBTQ community, so let's have sex and relationships. Um, let's play another game. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go our game go. asks, who would you do, why would you do it, and what would you do to three different people? Tonight, our game is called Shag, Mary Chop. And our theme is, of course, Dale Stein's Miami Gay List, Hottie <laughs> of the Day. Now, we introduced Dale at the top of the show. Renowned photographer, Dale Stein uh, is moderator of one of the most popular uh, social Facebook groups in the country, Miami Gay List. And as guest host of It's Happening Out, as being moderator of this very large uh, LGBTQ social uh, group, he does a highlight of Hottie of the Day. The opera singer at Juilliard Train <laughs> is doing Hottie of the Day. I'm loving the metaphor here. Right. Some of the world's most beautiful images can be seen in what he does. So let's begin Dale Stein's Miami Gay List Hotties of the Day for Shag Mary Chop. I, do, I have not seen these pictures, so I don't know which ones you play. And these are not my them. photos. They're not all my photos, by the way. Right. I must have that caveat. Right. And not your photos, but uh, you've posted them. In That's Miami how it Gay. started, though. That's how I started doing Hottie of the Day with my photos. And then it evolved into this, what it has become. Yes, what it has become. So uh, let's do it. Uh, oh. I, and oh. and oh. you're going to uh, help me, um, uh, Andre, uh, with the hat. You know, and then Tim. Timothy. Timothy. We right. communicate. We text. I mean, I bet uh, um, you do. We I chat on IG. Do. We chat on IG. And Robbie, I wonder what the XL stands for. Yeah. yeah. Ding, 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 ding. A show wing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, but I'm going to leave Dale for last, uh, of course. Rihanna, uh, who would you shag in this list? And let's just keep these up. Uh, let's just keep the, uh, the slide Tim. up. For, okay. I like uh, Tim. <laughs> and why would you uh, shag him? He's why? hairy. <laughs> oh, oh you're, a, you're a hairy girl. Mm. Well, okay. under all this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I instantaneously, I wanted to back out of my statement, oh, and right. you just were faster than me. Oh. All right, and who would you marry? Probably Robbie. Robbie, and uh, why would you marry Robbie? Ah, uh, he could looks like he'd be able to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure with the XL, right? uh, probably. And uh, and Tim uh, or Andre is uh, being chopped. Yep, but by now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't love that smile? I don't know. He's just too. He's not, smooth. He has no hair. He's smooth. He's too right? smooth. He's yeah. smooth. Yeah. Oh my I'd goodness. probably slide right off. <laughs> yeah. And Faye, uh, you tell us uh, who would you shag? Shagging? I'm shagging Robbie XL because of the XL. <laughs> yeah. Right. That is uh, uh, right. I am a gay man. Yeah. I'm gonna marry uh, the real Timothy because I saw Bear City from the Outshine Film Festival, and I'm all about the hair now. Yeah, all right. So great. marry. That's and my then, girl. And then yeah. so that I'm chopping the first guy. Andre, my goodness, I'm gonna stick. Up for you, Andre. He's two for Just two. Wait, right? And uh, <laughs> Chef Josie, who are you uh, going to shag? Yeah, so I am totally shagging 
real Timothy because I used to have a boyfriend that kind of looked like him. Um, and he used to give me like little uh, private dances, but hey, whatever, who knows? <laughs> it's a going in the book. Okay. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm marrying Robbie for the same reason. Oh uh, you uh, girls. You well, girls. I'm, I'm oh marrying God. God for the same reason. <laughs> yes. We got it. Head. Yeah, we got it. We know what you're talking about. I mean, consensus about. wins. He's got a big dick. Why are the best <gasps> guys out there? That's Ow. Like this. I'm, I'm scandalized. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Scandalous because <laughs> the, the, the lesbians are more size queen uh, than the gay Yeah. Guys. yeah. And you, then, uh, no, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Dale, you can say that out loud, but it doesn't land. It just doesn't <laughs> land. And, and you're chopping Timothy, or I mean, Andre, really? Yeah, Andre has too small a waist, and it's like, <sighs> uh, that's my waist. Yeah. You can't hide. Andre. Yeah. All right. If I'm going to hang out with men and hook up with men, they cannot have a smaller waist than me. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel guilty about eating the McRib. Yeah. 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 Yes. Especially with the, home and eat a large pizza with him. Yeah. yeah. Especially with the special sauce all over right. your mouth tonight. Yeah. And Excel and I could like throw down uh, in more right. ways than one. Yeah. All right. And uh, <laughs> this is a special edition of Shag Mary Chop, Dale Stein's Miami Gay List hotties of the day now you ch you chose these guys uh, dude. Yeah. you posted them yeah uh, so i am dying to hear now you've got to competitively choose <sighs> who would you shag well and remember he said that he texts and chats with a couple of the guys yeah. so it's not a friendship it's yeah. who would you marry chop yeah. or shag yeah. dale i'm curious because i don't know are you are you single partner boyfriend i'm sing i'm uh, single by choice for a really long time and i haven't even dated okay. or hooked up in Many, many, many oh, years. Uh, oh. so but you know, I lived in New York in the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s, and I, I had a very busy Being life. Once. I missed nothing. Yes. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. All right. So Dale Stein is going to shag, because I'm writing this down because I'm going to communicate with all three of these guys. Uh, Dale Stein <laughs> is shagging who? Okay. I'm going to shag Robbie. Because. So you just <laughs> like the, the girls. Like the they They're all size queens. <laughs> Say it. No, because he, no, not just that, but he's just so sexy and beautiful. Really? And then, <clears throat> sorry, Andre, I'm going to, to marry Timothy because he is one of the people that I chat with and I, on IG, because okay. I also uh, ad admin another page on IG that's genre Latino, okay. and I feature other people who are not Latinos. Okay. And so I've, uh, we've chatted, he's a, he seems to be a sweetheart, yeah. <laughs> in addition to being hairy. Okay. And I'm, it's. And why are you going to chop, Andre? Well, it's really by the process of elimination. It's not because Andre, I mean, he's t totally doable. I mean, I think that's quite obvious. It's the waist. Even with a small waist, but um, <laughs> and even, even smooth. But I think it's just the process of elimination. So compared to the other two, so that's how it happened. Now, uh, we remind you, South Florida, if you want to have a lot of fun, you've got to go to Facebook and join Miami Gay List. Uh, every do. day, there's so much interesting content. One of the reasons I like the group so much, it's one of the largest... Uh, social uh, LGBT groups in the country. The reason it is so fantastic is one minute you're doing this and you're talking, uh, Andre, uh, <laughs> I told Dale, I love this week, and just this last week, he posted one uh, that said, um, Brazil for the win. And <laughs> I just loved it because you get to watch this kind of content and then you have a vicious battle over some political issue. Ah. The same group. It it's is very so heated. great. I, yeah. I absolutely. Uh, you should go to Miami Gay List Thank and look you. at it and join because it's super, super interesting. So we end Shag Mary Chop and uh, let me just, can we look at the pictures just one more time real quick? Uh, uh, Andre wins, period. Andre wins for Al. So that's all I got to say. Um, before we uh, end the show, uh, we want to uh, say uh, we thank you to Jets Pizza. Uh, Jets is our, uh, our sponsor here at uh, thank you and uh, I was able to open the box correctly and uh, we're getting oh, ready to end uh, the show <laughs> and I want to give uh, everyone notice that this is another week uh, with you uh, sitting around literally the kitchen table of the world's first and most popular LGBTQ talk show in the world. Uh, before we sign off, let's hear from our host one final uh, good night from all of them and uh, let's start with Faye. Good night, mi gente. Make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe to Faye What I love to hear from you all. See you guys next week. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a good night from Chef Josie. Good night, beautiful people. Don't forget, stay positive out there. Stay healthy, stay safe, and, uh, well, we'll see you next weekend. 
And first time host, you've done a great job at It's Happening Out, uh, the 2020 Drag Queen of the Year uh, in Donald Trump land. <laughs> uh, good night from Mariana Patron. Uh, just thank you for having me. I look forward to being back again and make sure you come check out my shows all over South Florida. Drag thank queen you. right to the end. Brand, right. brand, yeah. brand. I love that. I really do love that. And a good night uh, from a very interesting and first time host at It's Happening Out, Dale Stein. Yeah, this has been really a lot of fun. It's been a great time with these amazing hosts. And I look forward to seeing you all on Miami Gay List. And I look forward to approving or declining your post. <laughs> <laughs> Queen! Wait. Fair. Wait. Dale, Dale, why do, you, this man. Wait, Love Dale, why do you think you're on It's Happening Out? I need my post. <laughs> <laughs> So, America, is what you watch tonight important to you? Is gay conversation, LGBT conversation, lesbian conversation, trans and queer conversation important to you? You've sat at the kitchen table tonight right along with us. Uh, and remember, uh, we'll continue to do this every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Come back with us. Tune in to the most popular LGBTQ talk show in the entire world. Remember, if it's important to you, it's 